So we're going to have one more guest now at our roundtable, and I'm super excited for this guest. I got to meet her in person when we went to Miami, Katrina, the wine genist. So we, we, we saved the fun for our finale here. Tell us, what does the who are you and what does the wine genist do or mean? Hi, Dr. Nacho. I am honored, humbled, grateful to be here. And I'm going to premise this by saying that if I'm anything in the nachos, I'm the guac because I'm extra. No, I'm oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> but uh, yes, I, I am the dental hygienist. I am a practicing dental hygienist here in gorgeous Phoenix, Arizona. And I work for a large group specialty practice in periodontics, uh, yeah. which is an absolute thrill and an honor. And part of why my brand built and developed itself the way that it did is because, first of all, I, I am a wine enthusiast and oh. a level one someone. I know some people like that. Some of them live Does in my it, house. Some of them are me. But, you know. There you go. <laughs> Who doesn't love a gorgeous glass of wine, right. especially after working a day in dentistry, right? right. Like, we all need it, right? Yeah. Um, but the idea being, when I started my work and in my brand, I realized that if you gave everybody in the room a glass of wine, we sipped it together, yeah. that we could have really provocative conversations about the things in dentistry that maybe we need to be talking about. Yeah. I think we need to stop sweeping some of these challenges that we're experiencing under that front office rug oh. and really start to expose what's going on. Because at the end of the day, the work that we do, we, we can talk all day about insurance companies and case acceptance and all of those things are, are challenges and barriers that can get in the way of us doing the work that we are called and compelled to do. I believe everybody in dentistry truly went to dental and dental hygiene school because we we really do want to help people. Yeah, sure. And so there's nothing more frustrating or easy to burn us out rather than when we get into these situations or scenarios where we acknowledge that we can't do that amazing work, whether it be finances, whether it be patient attitude, values, perceptions, or beliefs, or any type of an insurance company declining or downgrading our insurance or you know our coverage because they believe that that's appropriate. So the dental wine genesis is a provocative brand. We I love uh, that. And when we get a chance to talk in Arizona, I really like yeah. how you reframe some of the conversations. So you're working in a perio office. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about what you're doing with new patients and how you're trying to retrain the brains of maybe the dentist themselves, maybe the patient, yeah. but just try to be this, hey, it doesn't have to be this way it used to be. We're going to talk about this. I really found that interesting from our conversation. Could you tell yeah. us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So I have a, a relatively different position in our perio office. I work alongside the doctors. So I do not see perio maintenance or profi cases. I see all of doctors, new patients that come into the practice. We found that uh, periodontists would rather drill into gum tissue and bone and like futz around with sinuses versus oh, yeah. like probing a new patient. Yeah. So as a hygienist, I am the first face that the patient, well, first half of the face, I guess, that the patient sees when they come into the practice. And I walk through a, a process of care that helps educate the patient patient on the why. The patient walks through comprehensive medical history evaluation, and we help them understand why they needed to fill out all of that paperwork in the reception area to begin with. We walk through their medications, their supplements to better understand why they're on these medications or supplements. Um, we also ask them about their genetic history. Any member of your family ever lose a tooth to gum disease? That's Any right. member of your family experiencing stroke, heart disease, diabetes, upper respiratory tract infection, certain types of cancers? And so ultimately what we're doing is we're taking patients who are presenting to a perio office because they were told that they have a pocket on one tooth right. and we're helping to bring that patient through understanding that we're medical providers, we are healthcare providers. And that deep pocket that you have on that tooth is leaching bacteria into your bloodstream, circulating through your body and targeting your vital organs. Now, I don't mean to say this to scare our patients, but I implore you all to consider that even now in as we're practicing still through a global health crisis that our patients are a captive audience. Right. They sat and watched on the news as certain individuals experienced an elevated risk for this virus. They watched as certain uh, you know high risk populations inflammatory conditions age for example elevated that risk and they also yeah. understand that this virus you can be a relatively asymptomatic carrier. Right. So now more than ever I I think the work that we do is so much more impactful and patients are beginning to understand a lot of the layers that, um, you know, uh, Dr. Tom earlier on had said, as far as like, how do you get a patient to move forward yeah. with well, care? When it like is, is Periodontal care, you know, there's so many different philosophies that even periodontists mm -hmm. struggle over, hygienists mm -hmm. struggle over, 
you know, we're going through, like you said, this pandemic crisis where new information is coming out all the time and people should rely on their doctor's opinion, not necessarily Facebook's opinion or your friend's opinion in a group. And we as dentists have seen how this has caused problems. Facebook yes. groups in towns have yes. passed on information around dentistry that's just flat out inaccurate. So if we can just champion, you know, a different dental experience that's more comprehensive and whatever that looks like for you to design that for your own practice. What I think is great, Katrina, is people probably really value getting that experience with you before they get a cleaning, before they get work done. Even as cliche as it sounds, you don't get a, a second chance at a first impression. So what right. I, 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 what I imagine and compliment your team as they get this awesome opportunity with you to share their story probably make complaints. You know, when you're at a periodontist office, usually it doesn't mean everything has gone well in your mouth. You're not like an 18 year old with like all ones and twos. So That's right. That's I know right. you do so many different things. You know, you lecture, you do things. If someone just wants to connect with you to find out more about what the wine genus does. I also found this interesting, Brandon and I are watching, when you, you're a sommelier and you took all the courses, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. You, you have to learn about things besides wine too. What else do you have to learn about? Yeah. So I, my certification is through the court of master sommeliers. So it is a wine expertise for sure. And they focus a lot on wine, but you also learn about beer spirits and cigars as well, which That's is cool. kind of interesting. And as you'd probably suspect, I was the only dental professional in the room taking this exam. Everybody else was like, you know, pouring at high end steak rooms and all that jazz. So Ariel's very cool. You just find out how she can get that job. Right? <laughs> there you go. So, um, it's awesome. very cool. How can people reach out to you one more time? Then we're going to bring everybody back on who's still here. How can they Absolutely. reach out to you? Yeah. So find me. You can find me online. My website is www.katrinasanders.com. You can also find me on social media at the dental wine genist. And awesome. you can also email me katrina at katrinasanders.com. 